Hello, uh, this is Muho. Uh, I've got an important announcement to make in English. And that is um, that I'm gonna retire as the Abbot of Antaiji next year, 2020. It's almost 30 years since I first came to Antaiji in 1990, when I was 22 years old. Next year it's gonna be 30 years. I didn't spend all of these 30 years in Antaiji. After my first uh, visit in 1990, I went back to Berlin to finish, to finish my university studies. Uh, but then I came back in 1993 and ordained with my teacher, Miaula Roshi, and studied with him until 2001. And during that time, I also did practice for one year in a Rinzai monastery in Kyoto and in Hoshinji, another Soto monastery in uh, Fukui prefecture. And then in 2001, after my teacher had given me Dharma transmission, um, I was thinking of going back to Germany eventually, but I thought before I go back to Germany, I'll start a small sitting group somewhere in an urban environment in Japan because unlike the West there's very few training places in Japan where normal so-called normal people lay people can train that might uh, surprise maybe some people in the West because Training in the West is usually lay training. Even the monks in the West who are ordained, they usually have some regular daytime job. And they come together to sit in a group, maybe in the early mornings before they go to work or in the evenings or on the weekend. And you use the holidays to maybe uh, gather and practice a session together. In Japan, sitting practice is more or less reserved for ordained monks who practice all year long and often in a secluded environment or even if the monastery is in the city um, they usually do not accept participation from outside so there are surprisingly few opportunities for an interested Japanese layperson to practice Zazen on a regular basis. Some of these monasteries offer a sitting group once a month, on maybe for example the third Sunday each month. But even in a city like Kyoto, where there's lots of monasteries, it's hard to find a place where they would allow you to sit with the monks every morning or every evening. So uh, 17, 17 years ago, in 2001, I decided before I go back to Germany, I will start a Western-style sitting group in Osaka. Uh, but when I went to Osaka, I was surprised how expensive the rents were. I couldn't even afford a, an apartment to live by myself far less could I pay for space where, say, half a dozen of people could sit together. But at the time, a lot of homeless people were living in the parks in Japan. For example, in the Osaka Castle Park, they lived in, uh, well, cheap tents that ha they had built from blue sheets. Um, and when I saw that, I thought, well, in a way, that's exactly what Shakyamuni did 2,500 years ago. It's not that uh, Shakyamuni would have practiced in a palace. He left the palace to practice a Zen under a tree. So I asked uh, these homeless people, is there some space where I can put up my tent as well? And they said, of course, please, um, wherever you want. And right on top of the moat of Osaka Castle, where you had a great view, there was some space. And uh, I put up my tent and I practiced a Zen every morning from 6 to 8. In the beginning, I was sitting 
by myself most of the time but then i put that information out on the internet and people who had seen that who had seen my first home page uh, they started to come after a couple of weeks uh, sometimes there were three or four participants that was kind of the maximum there were never more than five of us i would say um, but the feeling that in the spring maybe more people would come when the information had, sp had spread but then on february 14th of that following year 2002 my teacher died in an accident when he was shoveling snow around the monastery and i was appointed as the next abbot um, so that's more than 17 years ago now nobody expected that the least myself probably my teacher never thought that i would be his successor but um that's how it went and it's been well 17 years since then and well i spent probably 26 years or so of my life actually here at antaiji so if you round it up it's 30 years mm. And I remember that when I first came to Antaiji in 1990, when I was still a student, uh, my Dharma brothers would um, point me to a lecture that Uchiyama Roshi gave when he retired as the abbot of Antaiji, when it was still in Kyoto in 1975. He gave a speech and at the end of the speech he gives these seven points of practice that you can also find on our homepage and I will put the, put the link below. And uh, all seven points are worth reading but the sixth one is uh, especially well impressing but also shocking in a way. He says there sit silently for 10 years then for 10 more years and then for another 10 years um when you're 22 like i was when i first came to antaiji 10 years is a long time 10 years sounds like a pretty long time to do something that as they say is good for nothing the zen is good for nothing to practice that for 10 years not so easy and then what are you supposed to do after 10 years do it another 10 years and what are you supposed to do after 20 years practice it for another 10 years so where is it gonna get you after 30 years well if you're 22 when you start with this life after 30 years you're gonna be gonna be 52 and that's basically the answer to the question where is it gonna get me you're gonna be 30 years older but uh, saying that i don't regret anything uh, rather i'm grateful to all those who allowed me to do this for round it up 30 years here at Antaji. First of all, my teacher who allowed me in and who ordained me as a monk, to my Dharma brothers who taught me the ABC of practice, and then later after I became the abbot to all those who helped me run the place and uh, keep the place up for the last 17 years. Mm. But it was never really easy, especially the first 20 years were difficult, I would say. After that, it got a little better. But the first 20 years were difficult. I hope that uh, in retrospect, at one point, I can say the same thing about my marriage. I'm married now for 17 years. I hope that 
when I'm 60 or 70, I can say the first 20 years were not so easy, but after that it got better. Um, the first years as a training monk, um, they are hard because you have to give your all. And well, you've heard that and you read that in books that it's a life and death matter and you have to let go of everything. But then when you're actually standing there at the edge of the abyss, it's not so easy to make that extra step. And yeah. For a long time you cling to the edge of the abyss and don't want to let go. Interestingly also, although my Dharma brothers taught me how important it is to invest first 10 years and then another 10 years and then final 10 years, none of them were still at Antaji after 10 years. All of them left after six, seven, eight years. And we were never a big lot. So for quite some time, there were only three of us uh, with Mia Ula Roshi. And uh, when we were five or six, it was a good number. But it's not, it's not a big number to run a place like Antaiji. It's good to have a dozen of people or so, but we never had that with Mia Ola Roshi. And after I became the abbot in 2002, I was, for the first three years, I was the only one. And people came and left and hardly stayed for more than, say, two or three months, usually. For the first three winters, it was always only me and another person. And never the same person. It was always a different person spending the winter with me. That means every spring I had to start again from zero and uh, teach people how to plant the rice and to uh, work with the chainsaws and to cook in the kitchen on the open fire and to how to heat the boiler and stuff like that. Um, the policy at the time was the same as with my teacher that basically you'd come, you could come any time to Antaji. There were no special conditions and you could leave any time. But the idea was, of course, that there must be some serious people who take Uchiyama's admonition serious that you should stay there for 10 years and then another 10 years and then maybe a final 10 years. But nobody stayed. Probably, well, part of the reason was myself. I thought, well, obviously I'm not a good enough example of Zen practice. So that's why people don't want to practice with me. Um, and after seven or eight years as the abbot, I was pretty desperate and even at the time I thought about closing, maybe it's better if I just close the place and, and, and say, well, everything is impermanent. And that's true for Antaiji as well. Um, practice is going to continue. It's not that the tradition of Sawaki Roshi or Uchiyama Roshi will die out if Antaiji will disappear. Um, but then I stated, well, I started to state more clearly on the homepage what I expect from people. Uh, one thing being that if you want to stay here for more than just a couple of weeks, then you should stay for at least three years. Like one year or two years is just not enough. Often people come and say, well, I want to stay long term. And I ask, well, what is long term? One year at least. Well, one year is nothing. After one year, you don't know anything about life at Antaiji. And also, there's nothing you can give back. After one year, 
or during that one year, what, what do you want to teach those who come after you? Um, it's going to be your first time planting in the spring. It's going to be your first time harvesting in the autumn. It's going to be your first winter. There's really nothing you can teach. And even during the second time, you're still learning. Um, you need three years in Antaiji to get an overview about what we're actually doing here. And you also need those three years so that you can teach others. And I need people. I need people here. The abbot needs some people that can teach. The abbot cannot do everything by himself. Another thing that I then put on the homepage is you need to speak Japanese if you want to practice in a Japanese environment. You do not have to practice in a Japanese environment to practice Zen. You can practice uh, Zen in America, you can practice Zen in Europe, you can practice it all over the world. But if you want to practice in Japan, you should at least speak some Japanese. In my case, I studied Japanese in university before I came. It's not necessary that you do that, but the problem I had... Uh, during the first decade as an abbot is that if I had 10 people in the monastery or maybe even 20, still there was only one or two of them who could answer the telephone. So if the telephone is ringing and that one person is somewhere outside, nobody can answer the telephone. Or sometimes it was only me. I'm the only one who's able to answer a telephone call. At the same time, I have to also have to greet and talk with Japanese guests because nobody else can talk to them. If somebody has an accident and needs to go to the hospital, I have to take them there and translate for them because they don't speak the language. Uh, they're not able to communicate with the doctors and nurses. Um, so even now, I often get mails from people that ask me, is it really necessary that we speak Japanese before we come to Antaiji? The answer is yes, it is necessary that you speak Japanese. But fortunately, now more and more people realize that it's a good idea that if you think uh, you need to practice in Japan, you also need to speak the language. And more and more people pick up some Japanese before they come before they come to Antaiji and that has, has made it much easier for me now. Also, and a lot of people were not so happy about that, I wrote or I'm saying now you should be between 80 and 40 uh, when you want to practice at Antaiji. I'm 51 now and I realized after I've after I became 40, it's not the same anymore. It's not so easy anymore. I mean, there's still lots of things you can do with uh, 50, and there's some people who are super fit even when they're 60, but um, life at Antaiji is not the same as mountain climbing or running a half marathon. It's a kind of, it's a 24-7 affair, and... Um, a lot of people don't want to believe me when I say this on the internet, but when you actually come here, you will realize it's it's not so easy for an older person to live here, especially if at the same time also you don't speak the language and you say I'm I'm 55, I'm personally fit, I'm healthy, I'm doing exercise. Um, and I want to start learning Japanese from now. Well, good luck with that if you're already 55. And all of your Spanish and all of your French and all of Suahili that you know won't help you with that. Um, it's a completely different language. Learning that when you're a senior already, it's not so easy. 
So part of the reason why it's become easier after 20 years now is that more people, they take this warning serious. At first, when I put it on the internet, I thought maybe nobody will come after now. No, people will stop coming and I will close the place. But actually, more people came and people stayed for longer. And uh, next year, um, in 2020, EchoSun will take over the place from me. Um, she's going to be the new abbess. Maybe some of you have seen her on the internet, uh, her Dharma talks. Mm, she tries her best uh, to speak in English as well, but she's Japanese. So if you want to train with her. Um, it's even more advisable that you study the language before you came. If you know the movie Zen for Nothing, um, which has shown in Europe two years ago, but as far as I know, not in English speaking countries. So if you're seeing this in uh, America or in England, you might not have heard about that movie or for the trailer. It's also up in, in English. I'll put maybe another link to the trailer below here as well. Um, Echo Sun can also be seen in the movie a couple of times. Uh, a very powerful woman. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, how Anta is going to develop after she becomes uh, the abbess. It's also the first time in the history of Anta that a woman becomes is in charge of the temple okay um so much from my side um actually i'm gonna move to osaka already in the spring but this year i'm gonna uh, move back and forth between osaka and antaiji and i'm gonna be here for all of the retreats so if you say i can't come for three years. Also, I don't speak any Japanese and I'm over 40 years of age. Uh, that's not a problem if you want to come short term to Antaiji. We have five day retreats in May, July, and there's also a session, Antaiji style session, pretty demanding. But if you want to uh, experience an Antaiji style session, 15 periods of silent sitting and two meals per day, and apart from that, only kin hin every hour um, that's possible in November and I'm gonna be here for the tree retreat so if you hope to see me during one of the retreats that's possible this year and also if you're living in Europe uh, I'm gonna be in Germany in late August and in uh, early September. All of the events in Germany will be in German, of course, but there's going to be one uh, event taking place in the Netherlands on the 2nd of September. That's a Monday. Um, in a place uh, called uh, Sinopril, uh, Sanga Maastricht is the Zen group run by Esther. Uh, I have visited her place uh, every time I visited Europe the last 10 years. So probably the place that I've been visiting from for the longest time now. And I'm going to be there on the 2nd of September and that's going to take place in my broken English. So if you want to uh, see me, but you can't come all the way to Japan, but you're maybe living in Europe close to the Netherlands, that would be one possibility. Okay, and if we don't see ourselves in the real world, we can still see ourselves on YouTube, or I can't see you, but at least you can see me. And yeah, all the best until next time. See you.